Nothing like some good music from the Mount Rubido praise team. What's up? Look, my boy, Pastor Kelly, has been literally killing this series on the royal family. So my job is to round third and bring us home. And I want to do that from a story that we probably know, but we don't know that we know. And that's the story of Samson's parents. And I want to talk about the royal family and commitment. Let's pray. Father, help us lest we perish. In Jesus' name, amen. The text that's going to kind of inform what we're going to talk about is found in Judges chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. I just want to jump off right there. Judges chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. And the Bible says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto her. Now, first of all, Manoah is setting the tone for his family and God is going to bless it. Let me just say that Manoah is setting the tone for his family and God is going to bless it and him. How is he setting the tone? Well, in a time of open apostasy where women value their ability to produce children, Manoah has decided that he's going to be a one woman man and even though the relationship has tended toward fruitlessness he has not given himself to foolishness she hasn't born any child and he any children and he knows how important that was to her and so what he does is he leans into the relationship and determines to be a one woman man he does something that we would call players hanging up your jersey he hangs up his jersey and to illustrate this point Manoa did something like he hung up his jersey. He retired his number after he decided he was going to be committed to this relationship. And to illustrate that point, it reminds me of when Michael Jeffrey Jordan decided to step away from basketball. And if anybody could step away from basketball, it was Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I don't hear nobody, right? After fresh off of a three-peat, he decides he's going to go and play baseball. Well, they retired his jersey, they celebrated him, and he left. But wouldn't you know it, he couldn't stay away from the game that loved him and that he loved. So 18 months later, he comes back to the game of basketball. And what does he do? He dons the number 45. And he's cooking. He's doing this thing. But they run up into the Orlando Magic. And one player has the gall, the unmitigated gall, the audacity to say that Michael Jordan 45 isn't like Michael Jordan 23. And so wouldn't you know it, literally 23 days after he'd returned, he steps on the court in his number 23 and he torches those boys. But what many people don't know is for every game that Michael Jordan wore the number 23 instead of 45, he incurred a penalty. And those of you who still fancy yourselves players out there let me tell you when you as a king commit yourself to a queen and you retire your jersey if you ever try to pull that jersey out of retirement you need to know there will be some penalties hello there will be some penalties and so we see very early that Manoah sets the tone for his family by making the decision that even though there is some fruitlessness in the marriage he's not going to be given to foolishness and he's retired his jersey and he is a one woman man that's number one kings when you trying to order a royal family you need to make the decision that you are a one woman man now here's the second thing that happens now Manoah's wife, who we don't know her name, she's at work one day, right? She's out in the field, she's doing her thing, and then a man appears to her. Now, we don't know who that man is until later on in Judges chapter 13, but when this man appears, he begins to talk to his, this, he, Lord have mercy, he starts talking to Manoah's wife about getting pregnant. Now, now, on face value, of course, I'm telling you in the 21st century context, but can you imagine if your wife was at work and some brother rolls up on her and starts talking about how she going to have a baby, how she can look, oh, girl, you got them child burn hips. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yo, if she come home and tells you this, at minimum, you're going to tell her to file an HR claim. If you really bought that life, you might show up at the job. But that's not what happens in this story because Manoah has already set the tone for his family. What happens? Well, first of all, you need to understand that she actually in verse six of Judges 13 gives a description of the man. She says that he's a man of God. 
His countenance is like the countenance of an angel, and he's very terrible. Let me put that into modern terminology for you. He's spiritual, he fine, and the boy make money. Did you hear what I said? So she comes home, tells her husband that a handsome spiritual money maker started talking to her about having a baby. Now the average dude, listen, let's keep it a stack, my kings. Let's keep it a stack. The average dude is going to be up in arms. But here is the second thing when you're ordering a royal family that you need to to be as a man. You need to be secure in your relationship with yourself. Secure in your relationship with yourself. Manoah didn't get all up in arms. As a matter of fact, if you read the text, he says, well, go and see if he comes again. Why is Manoah so secure with himself? Because he has made a decision to be a one woman man. And so nothing that she does is going to affect him adversely because he has leaned into this marriage. Even though there's some fruitfulness, he hasn't been participating in foolishness. So he's not comparing himself to this other person. He's not trying to gauge who he is in the light of who other people are. And that's what kings don't do. We don't compare ourselves to other people. We don't gauge ourselves based on what someone else is doing. We are secure in what we bring to the table and in who we are and we are secure in ourselves and that shows itself evident in our relationships with our queens. So number one, Manoah is a one woman man. Number two, he's secure in his relationship with himself. But get this, not only is he secure in his relationship with himself, because he's secure in his relationship with himself, when the man comes a second time, because remember now, if you read the story, not only does he tell her to go and see what happens, the man actually comes back when she goes to see if he'll return. But the Bible says she makes haste, runs to the side of her husband. Again, she trusts her husband. And we're going to talk about the queens in the royal family in a minute. But because of his commitment to being a one woman man based out of a security in himself, he's now secure in the relationship with his spouse. So when she comes after the man appears the second time, the Bible literally says that he arose and followed his woman. You see, Kings, when you secure in yourself, you don't mind following your queen sometimes. Dig it. Matter of fact, if she's leading the way, you don't mind going where she's taking. As a matter of fact, in my own marriage, my wife is very, uh, makes a lot of cake, makes a lot of money. You hear me? My wife make way, my, my wife make double what I make. And as she charts a course with our finances, and as we decide to purchase a home, or when we decided to per, I didn't mind following her wherever she was going to take me because I knew it was going to be beneficial to me and to my family. Secure enough in myself that even though she makes the money, I know that I can follow her leading. Listen to me, Kings. As you attempt to order a royal family, make sure that you've decided to be a one woman man that will give you the security in your relationship with yourself that will make you secure in your relationship with your spouse but where does all of this come from it comes from this Manoah is not only secure in his relationship with himself and secure in his relationship with his spouse he's also secure in his relationship with his God because he says we don't know, maybe the Lord will bless us at the end of the story. And so Manoah is secure in his relationship with himself. Listen to me, saints, not because, not because he got a big car, not because he has a big home, not because he has a big bank account. He's secure in his relationship with himself and secure in his relationship with his spouse because he's secure in his relationship with his savior. And a lot of things flow out of our relationship with our creator. King, when you're aligned with your creator, that makes you secure and everything else going on around you, including when tragedy hits. As a matter of fact, as we're in this global pandemic, Kings, we not really tripping. Don't get a shot. We tripping, but we ain't really tripping. If we know that we know that God knows the thoughts he thinks of us, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give and bring us to a good end. We trust his heart when we can't trace his hand. And so when we have that relationship with our savior, we're securing ourselves and we're 
we're securing our relationship with our spouses. And kings, I hope you get that. Number one, make the decision to be a one woman man. Even though a relationship may have some fruitlessness, you don't be given to foolishness. Then you make sure that you're securing your relationship with yourself. Listen, I understand there are some brothers out there with six packs. When I show up to the party, I bring a keg. Hey, 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 hey. Because I'm secure in my relationship with myself, which grows out of my security in my relationship with my savior and then permeates my relationship with my spouse to where I'm secure in my relationship with my spouse. But listen, this is all because Manoah set the tone. Now, let me tell you what the wife does or what the queen does that makes sure this relationship is steeped in and founded on a good commitment. All right, we've spent some time talking about the kings, but now let's 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 kick it to the queens of the royal family, right? But 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 understand that this is an outgrowth. Her behavior is an outgrowth of the tone that Manoah set in this royal family. Watch her behavior. She's at work. A brother rolls up on her, starts talking, let's say inappropriately, even though he supposedly, the Bible says early that he's the man of God, but we don't really find that out for sure until the end of the story. The Bible says that when this man rolls up on this woman and starts talking about having children, she goes to her husband. Now, ladies, I know this one is hard, but you got to hear me on it. She didn't have any secrets from her spouse. Mm, now, now, don't get it twisted. Don't get it chopped. Don't get it confused. That don't mean she's telling her husband, her king, her friend's business, but she's not apt to or prone to keep secrets, not even from someone who professes to be a man of God. You hear me? There is nothing that some man is about to say to this woman that may be even on the slight edge of inappropriate that she's not about to go and tell her husband. But why is she comfortable doing that? Because he has set a tone that he's securing who he is. So she could tell him in passing, yo, babe, guess what happened today? Brother rolled up on me, but you know, I let him know. And, and dude is like, yeah, I know, baby. I know it's good, right? Because he's securing himself. So that makes her secure in the relationship. And that also makes her secure to where she doesn't feel like anything she says that may seem like a challenge to the relationship is going to send him into a rage or reduce him to being insecure like a child in a corner. No, she knows she can share what happens because she doesn't keep secrets because this man has set the tone of being secure in himself self, securing his relationship and securing his savior. And so she doesn't keep secrets from this kind of man. So Queens, hear me. When you got a king, you need to honor him by not keeping secrets from him. Now that's again, let me make it clear. You don't need to tell him all your friends business. Everything ain't all like, you know, if he's secure, everything. ain't. Oh, why didn't you tell me that? But there is a very important component about not keeping secrets. And there's a difference between secrecy and privacy. There are some things that you can keep private, but anything that you know might hurt him or the relationship, that's not an area of privacy. Now you're keeping a secret. And so Queens, the first thing I want you to do, just like we said, this man got to be a one woman man. You have to commit that if you're going to be in a relationship with the king, while you value your privacy, you make sure you prioritize your privacy you make sure you prioritize privacy over secrecy. You make sure you prioritize privacy over secrecy. And this is what I mean by that. Let me just restate this. When something happens that you know would be detrimental or hurtful and you choose not to tell him, that's not privacy, that's secrecy. And secrecy can hurt the relationship even when a person is secure in their self in their relationship with their spouse, that can hurt and kill a relationship. So queens, when you're in a relationship with a king, you gotta make sure that you're not keeping secrets even though you are entitled to some privacy. Hello, 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 hello. Now second, 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 because of the tone that Manoah set as the king in the relationship with a queen, the next thing that happens, and it, and, it, and it arises in verse seven, is that this man begins to talk to her about the possibility of having a child, but she knows that if a child is going to be birthed from this relationship, she is not going to keep that from the patriarch of the family. Queens, number one, don't keep secrets from your spouse. But then number two, 
don't usurp his authority as the patriarch. Mm -hmm. See, the patriarch is the father of the family, is the father of the home, is the father, is the house band, the person that keeps the house together. And as the patriarch, she realized that she could engage in this conversation with this man, but she wanted to first run that by the patriarch of the family. And because he has set this particular tone, she didn't usurp his authority as the patriarch. As a matter of fact, she ran and made sure that her husband was involved in any conversation that was going to take place about them bringing children into this world because while she may be the mother and at times he is comfortable following her, he was still the patriarch of the family. And so queens, while we don't keep secrets, we do pride ourselves on having some privacy. We also don't usurp the king's ability to be the patriarch of the family. Not only that, not only that, not only that, not only that, she didn't usurp his position as the provider for the family. Now, don't, 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 don't miss what I'm saying here. While even though my wife makes more money than me, she still talks to me about what we're going to do. And she still talks to me and gives me that, that ability to still have a say in what's happening in our home. This is not to say just because you make the money and bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan that you now wear the pants in the home. If he's comfortable with you wearing the pants, girl, wear those pants, but don't usurp his position as the provider of the home. And in this story, what we see is that if there was going to be some fruit finally brought into this relationship, into the world through this particular royal family, she was going to run that by the patriarch so that he could still feel comfortable as the provider. Not that he was insecure or she was trying to placate to his lack of security, but she was just leaning into the fact that because he had set the tone in the relationship, she wouldn't usurp his authority as patriarch, nor would she usurp his authority as provider. But that's not all. She is talking to a quote unquote man of God, right? So you would think that as the person talking to the man of God, there is some religious connotations. And I think she realized that because what she also didn't do was usurp his authority as the priest of the home. That's not all. Not only does she not usurp his position as patriarch, not only does she not usurp his position as provider, she doesn't usurp his position as protector. Now, ladies, I know y'all know Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, y'all do mixed martial arts, uh, and all of the other stuff y'all do. But still, a man likes to feel like he is the protector of the home. Again, he is the house band, right? And so watch what she does. Cause this is, I mean, just reading the text, she don't know this dude. This dude has appeared to her two times. And do you know what she does the second time? The Bible says she makes haste and runs to her husband. Why? Because her husband is her patriarch. Her husband is the provider. Her husband is, watch this third thing, ladies. He is her protector. The king is the protector of the realm. Dig it. And so when this dude shows up, not one time, not two times, and he keep on hollering at her, she's like, look, hold on. Let me go get my husband to make sure my protector is here. And you don't got to have uh, 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 trapezoids and biceps and all of that uh, you, to be a protector of your home. Protection is about creating a mindset of comfort and stability to where your woman feels protected, not just by the guns you have, but merely by your presence. And she felt more comfortable with her husband present than she did without him him present because she didn't usurp his position as the protector of the home. And that's not to say, ladies, please don't, queens, don't read me wrong. I'm not saying that you are incapable of those things, but when a man sets the tone as a one woman man, securing himself, securing the relationship with his spouse, securing the relationship with it, you have a very capable partner. I'm not saying ladies in the 20th century, 21st century that you incapable. I'm saying get you a capable partner, one who is able to be the patriarch, one who is capable of being a provider, and one who is capable of being the protector. But here's another thing I want to tell you. She also didn't usurp his position 
as the priest. Because the text tells us, the Bible tells us that she's talking to a quote, man of God, even though she not keeping secrets, even though she not usurping Manoah's position as the patriarch, even though she's not usurping Manoah's position as the provider, even though she's not usurping Manoah's position as the protector, she's talking to what the Bible tells us is a man of God. Now, if she's having a a conversation, if she's having a conversation, if she's having a conversation with an angel of the Lord or a man of God, this is religious. Therefore, if she continues that conversation, there is the possibility that she usurps his position as the priest of the home. But let me let you in on how she handles this thing. And this is dope. This is dope. It's in Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. And this is dope. It begins in verse 15. Watch how this happens. Now, remember, she goes and gets her husband. The queen goes and gets the king. But the king raises up. And follows the queen, securing himself, securing a relationship, securing his savor. She's not usurping his position as patriarch, provider, or protector. So now they arrive on the spot with the man of God. Listen to this conversation. You find it in Judges 13 and verse 15. So they get there. And the text says in verse 15, and Manoah said. Verse 16 says, and the angel of the Lord said. Verse 17 says, and Manoah said. Verse 18 says, and the angel of the Lord said, verse 19 says, and Manoah did. Now listen, here we have been standing here listening to and or reading a conversation where Manoah, the man is there, the wife is there, and the angel of the Lord is there, but she's not talking. Oh, the, 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 I, I, don't write into Rubido getting all upset. This is not, this is not me saying women. No, 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 no. I'm showing you because of the tone that Manoah set, the role that she takes on comfortably. She allows her husband to be the priest of the home and engage in this conversation with the man of God or the angel of the Lord, very comfortable about what is. Now she could have done, what, what y'all talking about? Why y'all talking? No, 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 I'm here, I could tell, no, no. But what she does, she's very comfortable because he's her patriarch, her provider, her protector, and the priest to allow this conversation to happen with her present, but without her participating. Now, this takes some security on both parts, all right? This takes some security on both parts. But Kings, listen to me. This security only happens on both parts when you set the tone by being secure in yourself, securing your relationship with your spouse, securing your relationship with your savior. Then she doesn't usurp your position as patriarch, protector, provider, or priests. And then when things get out of control, because now the Bible says that the angel of the Lord performs some stuff wonderfully and then disappears and Manoah starts wilding out. But here's what she doesn't do. When that happens, she doesn't condemn, she comforts. And so ladies, this security is born out of while he sets the tone, she maintains it by speaking words of comfort not words of condemnation. And here we have the seeds for a dope commitment in the context of a royal family. Gentlemen, men, kings, hang up the jersey. Be a one woman man. Be secure in your relationship with yourself. Be secure in your relationship with your spouse because you're secure in your relationship with your savior. That will make her comfortable to honor the privacy of the relationship, but not keep secrets from you. She won't seek to usurp your position as patriarch. She won't usurp your position as provider. She won't usurp your position as protector. She won't usurp your position as priest and when things go haywire and you want to hear somebody rub you on your head and say baby it'll be okay she'll be there to do that because both of you demonstrate that you are committed to the growth and cohesiveness of this royal family he has his part she has her part and what we see is as a result of them playing their parts, the Bible says they produce a deliverer of the nation. Royal family, my kings, my queens, when you do your part 
and the other person does their part, now you're positioned for fruitfulness because you've stayed away from foolishness by remaining committed to your royal family. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that you really glean something from this. And so in order that the seed that has been sown is planted and finds good ground, let me pray over your royal family. Or let's say, for instance, you're not even in a relationship yet. Ladies, you want to look for a man who's decided he's a one woman man. He's secure in his relationship with himself. He's secure in his relationship with his savior. That will make him secure in his relationship with you. And gentlemen, maybe you're not in a relationship yet. You want to look for a woman who understands the difference between privacy and secrecy and who won't seek to usurp your position as patriarch, protector, provider, or priest, and is capable of speaking words of comfort, not condemnation. These are some things, if you're not in a relationship, and you're looking to start your royal family, you can look for in men and you can look for in women. And I pray that this message gives you some tangible, practical things to sow into your royal family. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for these principles. I pray that the individuals who hear them right now in this virtual digital space are blessed by them and actually use these practical tools to seek out the person to help them build a royal family that will produce deliverers in the earth. I pray over the singles that are listening. I pray over the married people that are listening. I pray over the divorced people that are listening. I pray over everyone who has heard this word that they would hear, that they would receive, that they would believe, and that they would do so that their royal family would be founded and based on Christ and a commitment to him and then to one another. This is my prayer and plea in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you.